I wanted a fuller in my blade because... Excalibur, but this was not without its problems. Now to change the die on the power hammer. First... Oh, that's better. Right, now I've got to knock these pins out, which... Uh, uh, This one is much trickier. I have to use a little sort of chisel and a shorter hammer. There you go. Oh, you got it. Right. Okay. So the next process is putting in a fuller, and apparently. Um, you get one chance to really mess this up horrendously. We've put most of a day's work into this sword already, so it would be bad uh, to muck everything up with the fuller. So I'm going to get a bit of a practice on just a piece of uh, waste steel, uh, just to make sure that I uh, uh, know what I'm doing. <laughs> As if. Good thing this is a practice run. It's very definite. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to try it again on a uh, different pace? Okay, uh, this is um, a bit nerve-wracking. Uh, thank goodness I had a practice run at uh, doing a fuller because I've made a complete uh, pig's ear of this. Um, I tried to rescue it, and all I've ended up with is a very broad and still not very straight fuller. Um, so this is rubbish, and I would have really spoilt my sword had I done this. On the other hand, I wouldn't have pressed the pedal, because I, I, I could feel that it wasn't going well from the start. Um, so more, more practice required. But apparently, starting by hand is, is just wrong, and you have to go straight to the power hammer, because that's right. There was an alternative that could make things go wrong less quickly. Right there? Yeah. Oh, God. Slightly off. So, with the groove hammered in by hand to follow, I could then transfer to the power hammer. Yes, 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 no, no! Damn it! Maybe just do the whole thing with this. Here you see the sword blade in the maw of the power hammer. It wasn't so bad, what was I frightened of? Well, <clears throat> this was Tom doing his blade with his greater confidence and experience. With Arnander, I took the coward's way out and used the hand method. Careful, one blow at a time. If I were out of position, I imagined Tom would have said something. The results were not initially excellent. New randomness. You can see that it moved off puttingly sideways every time I struck. Better. Is that joined up? You can't see. No, it hasn't quite joined up, damn it. It's alright. It's no biggie. Has that done it? Has that got I it? I reckon you got it there. I think we've joined it up. Hurrah! And it is overall straight and central. Were we really in Glastonbury? Yes, we really were. The next stage is the beveling. 
Um, this is going to be done by hand, lots of uh, hitting with the hammer on the anvil. And the idea is to uh, give a very wide berth to the fuller and quite a big wide berth to the, what's going to be the central ridge. The sharpness of the central ridge we're going to uh, achieve by grinding towards uh, the end of the sword making process. At this stage we've got to thin out the edges, it will widen the blade very slightly um, and uh, the technique I've just been told is to put it on the an uh, anvil at an angle and just whack the, the edge third and let the, the other side of the anvil do the job from the other side. So you don't actually turn it over and do both sides. Uh, you just do one side, flip it over and just do one side. Um, and all going well, this will thin out the edge and we will know when we've gone far enough because we will measure it with the magic key, with the magic key, uh, which gives us the edge thickness. Um, so that's the, the, this is the next opportunity to really muck up this sword. This stage was easily the toughest physically. Many hours of hot hammering. Ha! <laughs> Look at me there, brushing away, pretending to know what I'm doing. Get it nice and hot. Hit it on one side, which causes it to curl up a bit. Flip over and lots more hammering, hammering, hammering. More inevitable curling, then straighten it out while it's still hot. My blade kept corkscrewing and the fastest way to straighten it out seemed to be by giving it a twist in a vice. That'll do, yeah? And yes, just in case any of you is wondering, I am warm enough. Thank you. Watch Tom doing it much better than I could. He whacks one side, causing it to flatten and expand, which curves the blade away from him. Then he flips it over and does the same to the other side, which evens out the curve, all in one heat. My trouble was that I could do the first side well enough, but then it was cooling down before I could correct the curve on the other side. And so the wonkiness spilt up and up. How soft is hot steel? Ta -da! <laughs> We're not cheating with the bevels, are we? We're not cheating. Because there bevels. are some people who, who, how do they cheat? They grind the bevels on. But, but why do they do that? Because it's, it's, uh, it takes a lot less skill. To right. Get it just right. <laughs> okay. So if you want to show off that you're doing it properly, you know, hammer the bevels until they're jolly well beveled. Burning books to make your sword, Lloyd. Fire up! Can you guess what this is going to be? That's right, it's the striking face of a warhammer. Oh, British bacon. All right, maybe there is a god. I inspected the result of the first day's work. 
In that day, I had been taught how to use a forge and a power hammer, had made a nail, and then had shaped out the sword, tapered it in both directions, added the beginnings of a fuller, and had added most of the beveling. I was not impressed with my fullering prowess, but Tom assured me that it was good enough and could be sorted out in the grinding stage. Then we finished up the beveling using earmuffs, I see now. I am nervous to hear about this next stage. <laughs> What's the next stage? So the next stage is uh, we go back over the sword, starting at the tip, working in sections like we've been doing for the whole process, mm -hmm. straightening. So we'll be getting the, the spine of the sword straight on this plane, but also lining up the, the edges with themselves so they're nice and straight all down the sword and also with each other so you haven't got one edge that's up here on that side and down here on the other side and this again can be tedious and fiddly um, but very necessary if you want the sword that's actually gonna have any chance of cutting anything right and look, look impressively straight and swish and, yes and finished and um I, I, I look, see, overall, this may look to you, dear, dear viewers, you know, decently straight, but when you look at it in fine detail, it, it errs from the straight in almost every way it's possible <laughs> to err from the straight. I've got slight twists in it, the edge is, yeah, is, is wonky in, in, in three dimensions, and the other edge is wonky in three dimensions, but in different ways. And uh, I have a horrible feeling that this next stage could be potentially infinite in length. Uh, you just hit that bit. Oh, great, I got that straight bit. Oh, no, I've got that bit out. Oh, I've got that bit straight. Oh, no, that bit's out. And, and repeat. Yeah, yeah, you summed it up nicely. Oh, OK, great. <laughs> uh, but in theory, at least, I start at this tip, work down, leaving everything there absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. And then I do the next bit without throwing this bit out at all. Mm -hmm. And then I get to the bottom, and then I don't have to revisit the rest of the sword ever again. Mm -hmm. That's the theory anyway. Yeah, does that ever happen? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, so uh, let's do that then. Another thing you have to contend with when judging the wonkiness of the sword is heat haze. We have now straightened the blades, which uh, didn't take anything like as long as I thought and wasn't quite as painful a, a process as I thought, partly because it's just not actually as difficult as it seems. I started with this horrendous wonky bit of wobbly metal that was bent in all directions. It was twisted, it was, it was yawing, it was doing everything. Uh, and yet by the miracle of just a few taps here and there, it turns out it is actually possible to straighten. If you don't get it too hot, you can actually whack it in the middle because you're not going to squash the blade and, and shift, shift uh, metal out to the side. So you can get it reasonably straight. Another thing which helped was that uh, Tom, who's uh, been showing me how to do this, um, stepped in and sped things up a bit. Uh, but I was, I was doing all right. I'd got it pretty damn straight down to about there. And then he helped me uh, speed the process up a bit. So it was in, at this point that this horrible lump of wonky metal, which was awkward in my hands, turned into a blade. This now feels like a sword. This doesn't feel like a big bar of metal anymore. The taper means that uh, it's got less weight up here and there's more weight down here by the tang. Um, it's Because it's straight, it all swings in the same plane. This now feels like a sword. It's now finally turned into... Mm -hmm.